hey, this is just awesome, don't you think? Hey guys, in my previous video we were talking about these, those are Agara T1 switches and they come in two flavors. Now there is a no neutral one which I hold in the hand and behind me there is another one which uh, comes with live and neutral wire and this means that you can pick the wire you want for your wiring scenario. I've promised you in that video that I'm going to take a closer look and show you how to hook it up to Zigbee 2 MQTT and I'm going to introduce a couple of features. Each time I take a project like this, I try to learn something new and introduce a cool feature that you can apply into your home automation setup. And this one is no different. Now, the no neutral version of Agara doesn't have a power meter, while a live and neutral version, it comes with built-in power meter. However, in this project, I'm going to show you how to add a power meter to the version of the Agara without one and how to adapt this project to perhaps different relays that also support uh, Zigbee to MQTT or MQTT. Those could be some of Zigbee devices like some of Zigbee Mini or Shelly devices which also come with MQTT support. And the best part is the same project will cover both types of the devices so you barely have to modify anything pretty much just set your device deploy and enjoy your new pretty awesome dashboard obviously i'm not going to stop there i'm going to integrate this with smart speakers like Alexa. turn entry lights on this is obviously for Gara T1 switch, but you can, like I said, hook up any other relays as well. You'll see your live information on this switch. So you have a picture to make it pretty. And there is a information about the current load, the temperature, because Agara actually sends the temperature of the unit, something that is super nice because you can use it uh, to monitor the devices in wall and prevent the devices from going haywire. And total energy, which also submits uh, to this uh, flow, and that energy is being calculated, or that value is stored by the Agara switch itself. But I'm going to reproduce that with the switches that don't have a power meter. Now, there is a nice handy icon for the range as well. If I'm going to cover up my antennas, you'll see that the range should drop significantly, and there is a different icons, and that's uh, being displayed dynamically. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it still actually works. But anyway, you have to trust. Oh, there you go. The range has improved. And uh, yeah, uh, that's going to change nicely for you. Obviously, you have the ability to turn the power on and on. And you'll see that reflected in the temperature being dropped and the low at not being as high. Now below, uh, there is some uh, historical data which I'm also storing and you can display this information as a prices, how much this device costs you to run and as uh, uh, VAT hours which you can actually use to display the data. And below there is a Grafana and InfluxDB integration. Now this is optional because the data above is actually stored locally by Node-RED but if you want to use and take advantage of Grafana and display those beautiful charts that you can actually select uh, the date ranges etc uh, then uh, I'll show you also how to link that as well. I've mentioned that the same data apart from temperature is going to be available on the relays that don't have a power metering. How? I'm going to take the page from my Shelly 1L review which had a fake power meter which would means that you have to define how much uh, current that device is going to draw and the project will calculate how much uh, electricity is this device uh, using based on the time it's being switched on and switched off. Before I'm going to take this project apart in Node-RED, you probably wonder where else you could deploy Agara T1 and what other ecosystems it is, uh, well, available. It is, after all, Zigbee 3.0, so maybe there is a chance of integrating this with uh, different ecosystems. So I give it a go with four existing ecosystems that I have apart from CC2531, which I'm going to use in this tutorial. I've started with Mi Home. Unfortunately, I was not able to add this device as any other fake device or etc. Nothing that I've tried worked. Then I've moved to Tuya and Zigbee Hub that I've got. You can watch the review in here. And I was actually successfully able to pair this as a single switch. Now, the power metrics wasn't available to me, nor the temperature data, but the device was quasi-responsive and you could use it this way if you don't care for the power uh, meter. 
The third device on my list was Son of Zigbee Bridge, and was quite successful, I've added and paired it to my Zigbee Bridge, however the device was detected as a 4-channel device, only first channel was working, and unfortunately I was not able to update the information from the device itself back to the server, it was only one-way communication. Lastly, I've tried the same bridge, but hacked and flashed with Tasmota, and I was able to successfully pair it, however, I didn't have the device configured, so I believe if you're gonna configure the device in Tasmota manually, you should be able to, well, work with this device just in the same way as I'm working with it using CC2531. Now that we know everything, let's talk about the Zigbee coordinator I'm using. Now, for now, I'm using CC2531, and even though Zigbee 3.0 isn't recommended for this, I've tested uh, both firmwares, uh, 1.2 and 3.0, and I was able to pair and to use this uh, switch or relay successfully. I'm not going to show you in this video how to add this device and how to flash the coordinator if this is your first time. I'm just going to link those in the description for you. There is a video as well that you can watch it if it's your first time and you want to start your home automation yourself. The pairing process was very simple, just hold the button for 5 seconds and the device is already on the list of supported devices, so you don't even have to mess with the device's JS file. All I had to really do is rename the device for my convenience and I was able to jump into Node-RED and start programming. I've split my nodes into sections so you could uh, have a better understanding of what's going on, but first I'm going to show you how to set up a new instance of it. So once you download this and import via import menu in Node-RED, there's only a couple of things that you have to do. First of all, you have to open setup node and go to on start. You'll notice that there are instructions in here already. You'll have to set up the cost uh, as provided in here to calculate the cost of electricity and then decide uh, what is your device. If you're using a device without a power meter, you'll have to set your current uh, draw by device, you can measure that by third party or take a look at it, for example, uh, light bulb uh, power or current draw and enter that in here and the project will take care of the rest. Now uh, in here you'll also have to uh, enable if it's setting a temperature, if it has ability to set the internal temperature, select that to true, otherwise select this to false and you won't see the temperature results. And lastly, if your relay has a power meter, uh, also switch that to true, otherwise you have to switch that to false if your device doesn't have a power meter and we're gonna fake the power meter for it. And now that's pretty much everything that you need to do. If you want to have a picture, then the picture should be loaded in here. So this has to be a publicly available URL and you are pretty much done. Now, I'm just going to mention that if you want to use Grafana, you have to open that and add Grafana information in this node. Uh, you will have to go to your Grafana po uh, dashboard and then go to the dashboard, click share, and export the dashboard using embedded information, you'll get the link. Uh, also, that uh, there is explained everything what you have to do in here, and it's going to be a linked tutorial for Grafana and InfluxDB for your pleasure, so you can take it at your own pace. Like I said, Grafana is optional, but if you want to have this section of this, you'll have to fill in the Grafana information, otherwise, uh, well, you'll have to delete those nodes. And that's pretty much it. Now let's start with other stuff. So at first we're gonna set everything up and that setup in here will make sure that information is being passed over to Node-RED correctly. Now if you're not using a Garati one and your messages are being stored in a different way then you have to translate that into what my project will understand. You'll notice that uh, all the variables right now are being saved as a Garati one live and neutral and then I can access it from here. And this is how my object looks like. And it has all the information in here. So by default, uh, the power state is uh, provided in the state. Uh, the total energy consumption is provided in energy. And the uh, power draw is provided in power. I've moved it to a power current, but uh, something you'll have to trace in here in this mode and change it to make sure it is the same. You can see those uh, values in here. So for example, for total power, my total power is being stored in message payload energy. My total current uh, load is stored with my payload uh, power. So if yours are stored differently, then you have to update those information. I might actually leave the comment in here to make it more obvious. So 
when that information arrives, it's being uh, converted and passed over to uh, different UI interfaces. Now, so in here, I'm just uh, taking information about the uh, link quality and depending on the link quality values, I'm going to change the color of this icon in here so you could have a nice information. For button format, what I'm doing is just changing the color of the button and changing the information and the label of the button and again passing this to uh, my toggle button. Now the toggle itself, it just uh, issues toggle which is supported and then um, switches the uh, um, value to the opposite of the relay, so that's very um, easy. Now lastly there is a status format and this is a live update and you'll notice that I translate this information. This is a trick I've learned to split your payload into uh, three different uh, keys and then values are um, going to be as your strings and those later can be nicely entered in a, like a, a table or into a um, formatted HTML uh, page using Angular. So this all in here basically corresponds to those three en um, uh, entries and those are live measurements. So I don't store them, I just display them. I display low temperature and total energy. Now, if you want to start storing information, then I'm using Grafana in FluxDB. However, this is optional and that's why it's separated from here. And you can use that to display your um, graphs. Now, in order to do it, it's very simple. You just uh, format it to a correct format, which is here and uh, submit to your InfluxDB location. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, I've got that covered in that uh, write-up how to do it exactly and how to get started with it. So if you want to have a Grafana and those fancy uh, uh, charts in here, then you can do this this way. Alternatively, you can still use dashboard charts, which are available uh, because you have your data split into arrays and you can submit those values to a normal chart and then use the dash dashboard charts uh, to display something like this, but uh, using the information that is stored in this object. Instead of relying on live updates, which can be interrupted due to poor ZigBee network, I decided to use power calculations uh, differently. Now, this gonna means that I'm able to support the relays with power meters and relays without the power meters. Now, if the relay has a power meter, then obviously I take the current power and update my uh, calculations every 60 seconds. If the relay doesn't have a power meter, then as you remember in a power, in a sorry, setup mode, uh, you would have to enter how much power uh, this device is using, and then it would uh, update um, the database every minute based on the state and define whether that you should enter the value of the load or value of the zero to the array. So if you take a look in here, uh, for the first hour, the relay was disabled, and in the second hour, uh, the relay was, uh, sorry, that's a minute, uh, the relay was uh, pulling 9.9 .9 watts. That uh, then in turn is being calculated into total consumption. Now this happens in here because it's easier to display this at the same time. So I know this looks complicated, but basically what it does, it uh, takes the uh, values in here that uh, are being sent to uh, every minute to a how hour array. And then every hour, this value from um, hours, it's being summed up and sent to a day. So the day um, key, it has all entries for each hour. So hour, zero hour, I had 9.8 watts, one hour I had 3.4 and so on and so on. And then every day on the end of the day, I'm sending this data first to yesterday and then I'm updating my week. The week is the consecutive seven days, so it doesn't have a cutoff uh, because I prefer it that way. So I, I do it this way. However, month and a year, they do have a cutoff. So if the month ends on the first of each month, it will basically reset and displays a new information how, uh, in in this uh, section in here. So reset the counters. Uh, there was a quite cool thing that I did because uh, uh, in order to process this information, I have to either submit the information to reset every hour using this, every 24 hours to submit information to, um, to the day. But every month I had to do a small trick, which is quite interesting. Uh, what I did in order to uh, change this from every 24 hours to once a month, what I do every 24 hours, I check for a date. And if it's a first of the month, 
then obviously it's a new month and at midnight of the new month I'll do the midnight processing which means I'll pass the information to my yearly use, reset the month, etc. And in a similar way I have approached the reset year. In reset year I basically take the information about the current year and on startup when you deploy it I get the information on which year you started with and that way I can easily compare one, one, one year to another and define and my uh, beginning of the year. So that's how it works. Now a couple of words about uh, user interface. So picture is just a loading a picture, this is text, range I've already mentioned, this is just loading an icon and in the icon I'm actually updating the color of the icon and uh, which icon I'm drawing with. There's a couple of icons that basically I'm drawing and they are formatted in here, I mentioned that uh, before. Uh, the toggle button and range and uh, current information I've already covered. But what I'm going to cover is the information about the cost and usage start, uh, stats. So this is this toggle in here. Now this is a kind of uh, fun way to doing things because I can display that information using a flow variable. So in here I have uh, in currency, so in currency mode set to false because it's right now it's showing the kilowatts per hour instead. I use this flag to define how I'm going to display it. If I open my template you'll notice that there is a table and the table has three, two fields. So one fields with some values, the second fields with two other values, so that's first column and second column of the table. Now these are being updated by this massive node in here, but where this actually happens in, in here. So if I'm going to look at in here, I've got a value and that value is basically pulling from in currency. If I'm in currency mode, then I'm either submitting information about the uh, uh, currency or if I'm not in currency mode, I'm submitting the information with uh, wattage. And I just have two instances that's going to generate very short HTML style text that's going to be displayed in this. And it's a very nice and neatly working solution which we can quickly toggle between different values. I really like it and uh, it looks quite awesome. Uh, lastly, uh, voice assistant setup. Now for my uh, voice assistant for Alexa devices, I'm using my Alexa home screen, which I've used previously and I'm going to link that um, tutorial in here for you. But for the Google, there is a new update. So there is, instead of Nora, I'm using Smart Nora, which is very similar in use. So I'm still going to link that tutorial for you. Uh, but it's, uh, it's an update and uh, Smart Nora is going to be, uh, from my understanding, supported a little bit uh, better. So you'll be able to pass the commands back and forth. Now, the only thing that I had to make sure is that I'm passing information correctly. So Nora accept false and truth. And then you can define how you want that payload to uh, be issued when you issue the voice command. So you will just send on and off because that's what's supported by Zigbee uh, to MQTT by default. On Alexa front is similar because it uh, uses actually true and false to uh, receive the voice command and then I have to just translate it to on and off. And that's pretty much uh, everything. As you can see, the stuff you can achieve with Node-RED is pretty cool and if there is enough support, I might even consider actually uh, expanding on this project and adding a second channel so you could support devices with uh, dual channels. If you never used Node-RED before and you are hesitating, I have a great seven-part tutorial that's going to ease you into Node-RED and make sure that you understand what's happening and you'll be able to handle projects like this without any problems. Now, in the description of this video, you're going to obviously find a link to an article where this project is available for you to download. It's free of charge, so come on, go, go ahead, go there and download and try on. It's really cool. Now, as for now, guys, I do not have a posting schedule, so two favors. You know how YouTube works if you want to get notifications. Well, go for it. And second thing, social media. You can use it to engage it with me, talk about my future projects, get a sneak peeks of what's coming up, and give me ideas for future videos. So to let me know what you think about this project, there's a comment section for you below this video to express yourself, so do so. And for now, I'm just going to say thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.